Hey everyone, Reed here. Today I want to talk about two important things to be aware of when renaming columns within Power BI Desktop. I've had both of these on my list of things to talk about in a video for a while, but neither was long enough to merit a video by itself, so I thought I'd combine them together for this video. Now both of these tips will help prevent some development headaches for a few of you, so let's hop into Power BI Desktop and see what I'm talking about. So the first tip that I'd like to talk about has to do with the new filters experience that has been part of Power BI Desktop for a while. The new filters experience has to do with that filters pane that now is included in Power BI Desktop, but also the little filter icon that's up here that will let you know what filters are applied to the visual. Now let's take a quick look here and notice that this performance slicer here is coming from that performance column over in the fields list, and that is the same column that is in this visual. So if I was to go ahead and do some filtering here, I'm going to select medium and low to filter that. So notice that it's called performance here. It's called performance in the title, but however, if I hover over this, notice that it says the filter that's being applied is to something called outcome. Now they're both using the same column from the data model. However, the unique friendly name that I gave the visual here in this donut chart, I renamed it to outcome, even though it's called performance in the data model and it's called performance right now in the slicer. So the name that you will see here is dependent on the friendly name that is in the visual itself if that same column in your slicer is being utilized in here. Now, if I was to go ahead and get rid of this, just clear that out of there and then hover over this again, notice that it is now saying performance. So this issue only happens if you have the same column in the visual and as a slicer. Go ahead and undo that to put it back, there we go. So it's something to be aware of that if you're filtering something and you have your slicer called one thing, make sure that it's given a similar name as well in that visual. That way it doesn't lead to any data confusion or ambiguity for your users. So I'll go ahead and rename it over here just to make sure that they are aligned. Rename that back to performance. There we go. Now it's the same here as well as in the slicer. Now that second tip that I wanted to talk to you about, if I actually come over to the relationship view in here, we have two tables. I have my sales table and I also have a separate table of performance, which is linked to that performance column in here. Now these are dependent upon each other. If I actually go in here and go to edit queries, my performance table here was built off of my sales table. If I go to the view and look at query dependencies, we can see that they were built upon each other. If I actually go all the way back to my applied steps to the source, we can see that it starts with my sales table, removes those performance columns, and I essentially create a lookup table for performance. Now the thing that I want to show you, kind of the gotcha that happened with me, is watch this. If I was to come into here to my sales table that that performance table is built off of, and if I was to come over to the right here and rename performance to say performance ID, just give it a new name, hit OK. Now if I try to refresh this workbook, Notice that performance says the column performance of the table was not found. So it's now broken my other query. If I come back to home, go to edit queries. And take a look at performance, we can now see it's broken. It still sources to the sales table. However, all these other steps that previously expected a column called performance did not automatically update. So now I would have to go and fix this. And you can see on my sales table here, when I did rename that column, it added that rename column step, which then broke things that were referencing it. So be very careful when you're renaming stuff in the data model, especially if both tables are loaded and are depending on each other, because it can cause headaches like this. So go ahead and get rid of that. Close this back to let the tables reload. There we go, working as expected. And that's about all I wanted to cover in this video, just two general tips and tricks related to renaming columns and how they might throw you off a little bit if you weren't expecting the results. So I hope you found this video useful. If you liked the video, please click or smash that like button below. If you have anything to say about the video or have a suggestion for a future video, please add that to the comment section down below. And if this is your first time here or you want to see more of these awesome videos, please click that subscribe and notification button. And otherwise, I will see you in my next video.